Okay, guys. So what I'm here to talk about right now is another NBA playoff series preview. This time it's the Brooklyn Nets versus the Atlanta Hawks. Now the key to victory for the Brooklyn Nets in the series versus the Atlanta Hawks is to try to slow the tempo of the game down while at the same time trying to wear down the Atlanta Hawks physically. Now in order for the Brooklyn Nets to accomplish this, I would recommend they feature a lot of post-ups on each block. For example, Brooklyn Peg on one side and Kevin Williams on another side. Now the reason why the Brooklyn Nets might be able to feature a lot of post-ups is because the Brooklyn Nets holds the height or weight advantage at three positions in the starting lineup. Let's first take a look at point guard. Garen Williams is one inch taller and 30 pounds heavier than the kid. Garen Williams is listed at 6 3 2 10. Meanwhile, Jeff Keegan is listed at 6 2 1 8. So, if the Brooklyn Nets manage to post up Garen Williams, Garen Williams most likely will be able to back down Jeff Keegan with ease. And it may and make it easier for him to shoot over Jeff, Jeff Keeg as well since he has a one-inch height advantage. Now let's take a look at Damari Carroll versus Joe Johnson. Now, while Damari Carroll had a one-inch height advantage over Gogonkin. Gogonkin is 30 pounds heavier. What that means, if they post up Gogonkin, Gogonkin, while he may not be able to shoot over Gamari, he is most likely going to be able to back him down and either draw the double team or get a shot closer to the basket that he can make. Now the final matchup is Brick Lopez versus Al Horford. Now Brick Lopez is listed as 7 feet to 60. He had a two-inch height advantage over Al Horford, even though it, it may be more because I don't think Al Horford is really six ten, and he had a fifteen, and he had a weight advantage of fifteen pounds. So of course it may feed the ball to Brook Lopez, he could both back him down and or shoot over him with ease. I strongly believe that if this strategy takes place, that Lionel Holland will rotate Go Johnson and Gavin Williams in terms of 
who gets to post up in the low block. And if this strategy takes place, Battle Force Atlanta to send help defense. And ultimately, that'll open up somebody on the perimeter to either attack the basket or to degree. And more importantly, late in the game, since the Atlanta Hawks will be tired from that physical pound pounding, they won't be able to use the speed advantage over the breaking neck to get to the rim. The key to victory for the Atlanta Hawks in the series is to find ways to speed up the tempo of the basketball game. Now the Atlanta Hawks can do this via several ways. The first way is to use what they have been using all season, which is constant ball movement. And as a result, the next may have to constantly rotate onto different offensive players to keep up with this ball movement. Therefore, the Atlanta Hawks are bound to find an open guy just because they're faster than the Brooklyn Nets car. The Brooklyn Nets aren't going to be able to rotate as fast as the ball is moving. Therefore, the Atlanta Hawks are bound to find an easy, an easy wide open three or an easy shot at the basket. Now, the second way they could take advantage of their speed is by giving the ball to Al Horford at the free throw line. Have him face up and use his speed advantage over Brook Lopez to attack the basket and score. Or if somebody else comes over, he can kick it out to Gamari Carroll or Kyle Corner for the wide open three. The same thing goes for Jeff Except I would give the ball to get Keeg beyond the three point line and try to have him use his speed advantage over Garen Williams to cause the game result as a horseback. Ultimately, I think the series is going seven games. And I have the Atlanta Hawks scratching out a win in game seven. Just because I think there's gonna be moments where the Brooklyn Nets have the basketball and Brook Lopez is hanging out at the free, at or beyond the free go line and either doing nothing or shooting the basketball from there instead of being further down in the low post and attacking Al Horford, getting him in foul trouble and gain offensive rebounds for his team. But I think 
if I ran a hawk, I can go broken neck on the toughest series for the Atlanta Hawk, even over Cleveland. Just for the simple fact that the broken neck have the size and strength advantage over the Atlanta Hawk at the majority of the positions. As a result, they're able to slow the game down. Once the Atlanta Hawks get past this, I think they could be keeping in the Eastern Conference Finals, but if Chicago beats Cleveland, they'll face the same exact scenario in the Eastern Conference Finals as in Game 1. That's it for right now, guys. Peace.